on this particular session here we are going to <clears throat> install radiator screens uh, right here in the back on this guy here I'm just gonna do one you know you can also do like one up here as well anyway these are some other projects I got that's a kit bash I call that a 40 Mac and uh, I want to say that's a 60 or 70 whatever anyway this guy here I did years ago just kind of give you an idea how those screens look and I, what I did I'm, I was attempting to if I can get a good angle yeah where you can see it emulate uh, Overland model brass locomotives you can see the doors and I got the screens up here these are actually Overland radiator screens I, I don't know where I can get some so if anybody can tell me man because these are like these look real so I haven't been able to find them so I would love to get some if somebody knows please help me so in the meantime and in between time I saw a guy um, I posted this on one of the train groups and uh, they sell it at Amazon at different gauges so anyway I'm gonna use this for this case and uh, you got your measure if you need to use a measure I'm just gonna eyeball it I got my scissors you're gonna need your magnification uh, the different files of choice uh, and uh, and there we go we'll start cutting into this baby and take it from there so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go with this uh, my carbide since I got some good length on this baby so uh, I can cut cut lengthwise and get some good straight cuts and then come back with another tip go from there Let's see what we got here just take your time you got an old shell so you're not worried watch your fingers And don't be afraid to pause and clean it off. See what I'm doing, the mistake I'm making, I'm trying to go too close to the edge, so I gotta I'm gonna have to stop man. I'm gonna have to go in the middle. I'm gonna have to start all over and go in the middle so I don't damage it. I'm already too close to that edge, so I'm not even gonna try to go down there and you know straighten it out or whatever. I'm just gonna open me a gap so I can get it in. So it didn't work out the way I wanted. I wanted to kind of ride the edge, but it had an angle wrong. So I'm just gonna start in the middle. So you're gonna make mistakes, but just don't don't try to make a correction too close to the edge because you can't bring it back. You can, but it just, you know, may not look right. For the rivet counters, the rivet counters might get pissed. Just too close to the edge. I'm gonna pause and clean this off a little bit. So you can see, uh, hold on. Where is that? Yeah, right. Down by the edge. It's not too bad, but it's closer than I want to be. So I'm going to try to, let me see, get some more of this off. And then come with my great white sharp. All right. Well, it's a little sloppy, but... I'm going to take my time, switch out my tip, and I can smell the plastic getting hot. <clears throat> this baby in. Find me a starting point. I'm going to start in this middle area there. Be my safe zone. Time, man. Oh, uh, let's see here. And if you if it doesn't feel right in your hand, find a good spot where it's comfortable holding. Thing is, I'm sorry. There you go. All right. Watch my decals. I don't want to mess my decals up. I like that blue. Oh. 
to get to the chopper. No time for games. I'm about done. I'm just kind of hit this edge a little bit more. Get it kind of close. Keep wiping it. And, uh, I think we found the, hold on a second. Oops. Look, we found the, uh, hold on, that bottom. You can see where I uh, messed up down there earlier, but I didn't get too far down, you know, cause uh, it's gonna be at the bottom, so I can weather it. So you can see the top edges, the side edges. I got that, that edge over there by this other one, kind of close. This one here is perfect. You know, I got a little space to work with. So we'll, now we'll clean this off real good and then get our files and start filing these corners like we did the doors. These should be a little easier than the doors, but we want to get some really good crisp uh, cuts on these uh, corners and then keep them flat so we can get our screens in. But like I said, those Overland screens are, I know these, Overland may have had some radiator screens for this specific locomotive. I'm assuming, I don't know, but uh, <clears throat> that would be really awesome. So uh, anyway, we'll go ahead and get our files out, uh, take a quick break, and we'll be right okay. back. So anyway, we've done our filing, like I said, with your Dremel, you know, definitely want to get a um, variable speed, get you some different tips, and just take your time, practice on some old shells. So I'm gonna go in here. I've already scratched the uh, my decal, <laughs> so you can see how I was uh, doing some uh, test filing. You can see how easy it is to damage your work. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and start hitting this bottom section here. Try to line it, level it out. Just, get this, just trying to get the bottom going here. You definitely want your corners crisp. So I go, this is my my block. I like this for corners. I, I definitely would love a shorter one with a bigger tip, but you know, you get it. Just take your time in these corners. I usually go in at an angle and then get one angle and then get the other. It's a little easier that way. Like, a, like I said, you get your other magnification out to really get a close look. Just once you get your little rhythm going, just take your time. Don't get overzealous. I'm just saying that. <clears throat> All right, here we go. That's a little uneven. I can see it. The top. Just for our sake, I'm gonna get it pretty close to level since this is our little test puppy. <sighs> get these, I still wanna get my corners good. Oh, there it is, I just scratched it again. So once again, just shows you how much we have to take our time. You know, cause I tend to move a little too fast. <sighs> so I guess I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop right there-ish. As I'm cutting my screen, I see I'm a, some areas I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to do something to it. Cause I wanna cut that screen. I'm gonna use that the lines in the screen to make my cuts on the screen. So I don't wanna have to, you know, I can't make any really crooked cuts for the sake of this plastic, me not taking the time to file this plastic level. So, but, so that corner looks a little bit better. So anyway. Get my screen. I've already did a little pre 
preliminary cut. I'm just going to eyeball it. I'm going to eyeball it and get my marker out. So let me see. This is about right there. Right there. Let's see what happens. I'm going to cut a little bit outside the line. I always want to give yourself a little bit of room to screw up because you can't put the metal back. I already know this is too big. So as long as I know I got more than what I need, keep my, making my cuts. I'm going to get the ends first, then I'll get the top. Because at least if I get the ends right and it sticks in on the ends kind of tight, you know, I can work with the top. So I got the ends. The ends are just barely there. So you gotta be careful. Oh, that's bending a little bit. Let's see. Oh, shit. Uh oh. Good. I still got. Yeah, great. So yeah, I, I, the, the uh, wire bent as I was cutting it. So I'm gonna have to hold these scissors kind of super tight to make sure I don't do it this next round. So I'm getting close to this end. I can see visually it's too thick. So I'm going to cut some on this end here. And I know my glue my glue is over there close. I think I might be close. Yeah, it's looking, looking pretty decent. Is it getting there? Getting there. And see, once you kind of press it in, which you're beginning to be able to kind of press it in with your fingers a little bit-ish, then you say, well, I think I'm going to stop cutting on this wire and go back to this plastic. So I'm going to set the, set the, set the uh, screen down and get our file out and try to uh, open this top and bottom section a little bit. So maybe the screen will drop in there. See, once you get that screen to a certain point, you don't want to do anything else to it. Leave it alone before you screw it up. All right, so I'm going to get this up, up here and maybe... Maybe it'll drop in here. We'll see what happens. Less is best, so I'm going to stop right there and see what happens. See if it'll go in. Uh, actually, it looks like it's a little... Well, hold up. Hold up. I'm almost there. It's almost kind of kind of wanting to sit in on its own. Let me flip it upside down and see if it might want to go in that way. Because if I can kind of press it in... So I'm, I'm going to take some more of this plastic off on this shell. Let me hit these corners a little bit. Maybe I can get it in on these corners. Get the size a little bit more. Especially, that give me a chance to go back to the corners I didn't get. <clears throat> at the bottom. I should be getting getting in pretty soon. Once it gets in and kind of sits in on its own, then I can come back with my glue. So let me see what happens here. And sometimes, man, you uh, hold on. You might have to write, uh, give yourself a, you know, a little note on how it goes. Like for, as far as the top, if you have a top section. So I think this is pretty close. Yeah. I, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna hit this end over here on the screen. This will do a, a mini cut. It's already kind of rough. See it hanging right there. So I'm a, and I still need to cut some of it off anyway, so let's see what happens. Boom. It might just drop in now. Hold up. Just take your time. So I'm going to take some more plastic off. This next one, I'm hoping this next round should hopefully get it. And this. Hopefully this one gets it. So we're getting there. So if we, if we were doing this whole thing, we'd have to do this, uh, what, six times? If you do the front one, 
obviously with that front one, they've got some I know that you can purchase that are see-through for these front ones, I believe. So it'd be easy just to cut the hole and just put the uh, the actual part in. So I gotta find out how this fit before. Try to get it in here. Cause if I can see, fighting it a little bit. I don't want to fight it, just want to kind of get it in there. So what I'm going to do, I think I got it good. It's kind of lined up pretty decent at the bottom. So what I'm going to give, oh, fell down. Uh, all right. I'm going to shave a little bit more of this plastic off. should have gone in the other direction but anyway in theory I wouldn't even be I wouldn't even have a decal on here so <laughs> hopefully this gets it so once I kind of get it because I want to get it as good as I can I don't know what's going on I think I'm gonna have to Cut some more off the screen. So this is where it gets the pros versus the Joes. I'm probably gonna cut take too much off, but I hope my scissors tight. This has got to be it right here. I think I had too much screen, so I think I'm gonna get it in here this time. Oh. So what I'm going to do now, I think it's, it's just kind of falling in, which is fine. Get my glue out. Do some little taps of glue inside. Set that baby in there. Okay. There. Yeah, I'm just going to put some at the top. Run it through the top. Because if I screw up, it's less, less likely to see the screw up so here we go slide it down uh -oh. something's on my leg oh shucks What I did, as I said, I made a mistake on my screen. On the end of my screen, I cut too much off. So, I'm not gonna start over. I think you kinda got the idea. You have to take your time. I'm not gonna, you know, I could, th in theory, fill the gap with some uh, putty, sand it, but I'm not. So, I just glued that top part I'm gonna come back and put some at the bottom. A little disappointed, but that's gonna happen. So as I said, if you're practicing, you know, it's fine to do it on something that's damaged. Now, I'm already rushing on my glue because I just noticed that it moved. So I'm gonna pause it and then glue it and we'll take another look. All right, we're back from the break. Let's take a look at this thing. But as I said, uh, you know, with the exception of the length there, but just, you know, we're practicing. And like I said, you can see my damage where I scrape with the uh, Dremel. But you can tell, uh, as we saw earlier, my Dremel needs, I need to replace it. The decal turned out pretty good. You know, obviously when you finish the paint, you put the uh, flat finish on it or whatever. Uh, and of course, put some more of the uh, decal solution to flatten out the gaps. You can see the air gaps in there. So I usually come down from the top. Anyway, so uh, what we'll do, we'll, just for, for fun, we'll go ahead and kind of do some weathering. What I did, I cut the other side out so we'll be able to see through it. So uh, I'm going to go with some uh, weathering here, see what we got. I'm going to go with some weathered black. 
I'm gonna put a little black on it just to see what it looks like. Take the top off. So I like to take my. Sometimes I do my weathering out. Take my paint, put it on the rag there. When I when I weather it, you know, I, even though I, I'm still kind of, you know, I don't want to. Obviously, if we were doing, you know, one for, you know, when, once you practice for a while, we wouldn't have this gap in the screen. You know, that's why, you know, we get a big big roll. I had a I have a huge roll from Amazon. I mean, but as I mentioned earlier, if anyone knows the source that I can get some prototypical uh, Overland models radiator screens like for the Max and the other locomotives, please uh, reach out to me, I'd appreciate it. So anyway, just weather this baby up a little bit. I mean, wet weather up around it. It's blue, I like this blue on here. Get the top a little bit. There you have it. Let me turn off one of these lights so we can get the effect, the effect here. But uh, so there you have it. There's your oh, hold on. Let's see through. I know it's sloppy, but you can take a uh, brush with some alcohol, where those little where the paint or the glue gets in those holes, you know, before you weather it, because you use the possibility you'll get glue in the holes. Um, and just come back with a brush with some alcohol or some paint thinner and then just kind of gently uh you know wipe over those holes blow through them wipe over them blow through them and you can eventually get all all of that out like at the top you know there's, there's quite a bit of uh glue overflow at the top there you know and then down here you know so you can clean it up if you're a rivet counter but yeah just kind of did like a little weathering on it see through the other side and there you have it putting uh, screens in the radiator. So we'll come back and do something else next time. Thank you, man, I appreciate it. Subscribe.